Yeah, well, we're going to get into that a little bit later, um, calculating M and stuff like that. And uh, I do have the last example we're going to work on going forward is calculating E out of the circuit based on mutual inductance. And um, you can actually apply a phase notation that you guys learned back when um, to solve these types of circuits. So right now, I just kind of wanted to get an introduction to the sign convention, you know, and how you how you write equations. How you do it there, but that is the case if the voltage here is positive, if it's, it's just like this. If I decided to, you know, bump you with one of these dots, say I take this dot and this here, that messes everything up. That, that okay. I'm gonna actually redraw it.
operating with So if we want to write um, an equation for this, there's obviously going to be the, the mess line we're going to have here in documents just from the inductor and the circuit, but it would just there would no need for the mess and then the usual mess. Um, so you can write this as an equation. Why the equation for mesh two would have a negative sign? Okay, so the positive current is the defined current is going to the non dotted cell line. So you'll have positive there. So for V one, you see that where you would find the positive is on the same side as the voltage is also positive, so the terms there for V1 are going to be positive. Okay. Now for V2, you can see that the opposite is true. So on the side where the defined current is going into, this is positive because you know, next thing the dotted thing, um, you have negative. So that means the sign would have to be flipped. Does that kind of Um, well, I mean, it's exactly like the equation for, for voltage for an inductor, except your inductor, you can't see it's just three sources. So it's not like, like here, okay, yeah, I have L1, I have L2, where is M? M's just kind of floating in between. It's the usual inductor. We could, you're never going to see this stuff. This is M. Picture an imaginary inductor in there that has inductor M. Does that kind of sense?
positive theta to positive two and this is negative, then this term is going to be positive. Does that make sense? So because the if you see how we got this way, see how we said that that was positive? Oh wow. Then what non-dotted side on the other surface. So when it does that, um, we say, okay, well that means on the other circuit, you have to write a plus whatever the defined parent is. The dots just help you find it. Um, you could also draw it like, uh, for example, if the dot were on the other side and we weren't using the dotting convention, you could draw the coils the other way, but that's like, that's going to be really tricky, so that's just not the point. Alright, for up there for the uh, for the mesh equation, do you want it as a function of z? Is that z i one as a function of z? This one? Yeah. Yes. And how about the second one um, where no the the z two as a function of z? Yeah, that is that z i one or z i two? Z i two. Is the second one which is m? Yeah. Well, where's it m? Z i one. Z i one. So the currents are a little more flexible. Mm -hmm. So this yeah it doesn't matter. Yeah. But so that'd be a function of z also. Uh, yeah, well, that, yeah, I just, you know, I get nervous <laughs> writing these words. So if that convention is pretty clear, I guess we'll just um, start with an example. Does that kind of make sense to everybody, though, how you assign the positive and negative to the terms based on where the dot is? So this can happen even if like the inductors are in the same plane. It doesn't necessarily have to be two circuits that aren't touching but they're sharing a magnetic field. It could even be like these are all connected by wires, but there's still a mutual inductance between these two inductors just because they're close enough. The magnetic fields are close enough together. So um, yeah. So we have to account for that. We have to account for that. And that's what this example is about. So like if you're designing a circuit and you have two inductors and then you have to you know, consider maybe, oh, well, if I put these two things together, then magnetic fields are going to interact. And so that's something that you might want to want to avoid. Um, or it's something you might want to explore. You just have to know application. Um, okay. So how we do this type of problem, which is the there's mutual inductance between these two inductors, is um, what we want to do is
care why this resource and the resource ones are out there if you're only running that system once a month. So you can do the same thing. How we find it before. For this mesh, the initial term is negative. But that's because the current is flowing clockwise. And it's flowing in the negative side. And this mesh, the current flows the other direction. So the initial term is just positive. So that's why this thing is written the way it is. It's just positive. Over. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So it could be it is, you could think of a negative LTV. You could you could switch the current here if we wanted to and write it as negative. If that makes you happy, go ahead and do that. Um, so if L T so if it is negative, LT is mutually negative, so is L T. Because of the, the way it's written it looks Which like mutual yeah. mutual for L one or mutual for L two? Uh, yeah, but it's just written like that. The reason why it's written like that is to accentuate like why we assign the negative to the mutual negative. So if we do that, we would get that. Can the mutual, I guess, is considered like a separate component? <coughs> yeah, well, um, so like each inductor has the mutual term is the same for both inductors. Um, but From the interaction of the two heavy metals, and there's a lot of I mean, different windings can, can change that. You know, if you have more turns than one, it's more like they're like close together. Yeah, right. So that's why you also have that crossover with you know all the heavy metals, which you can times the same for each other. So. Why do you have a time clock? Call it from uh, labs. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Like this, one, only one side of the circuit, the last neck, is out. 
entire thing in two signals. And it's adjacent to uh, the next two, to the right hand. And there is some in use, there are shared inductance because of the magnetic fields interacting between the two conductors. And that shared inductance actually is going to produce a voltage out there. So basically what we're going to do to solve this is to switch the spring KVL out and solve this with the paper. Do you have anything to do with like the transfer now? Um, we're not going to get into that yet. This is just actually yeah. Yeah. The, the basis for transforming the paper step. Not necessarily step by step. Yeah, um, the same kind of Those two ohms in J4 ohms, which is the inductor, not the mutual inductor, the inductor. Both of those are going to be Oh. Come on, 
Dude, no. <laughs> 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 what part do you want to start? I want to get the salt and ice too hot. I do the No, you read it right. That's right. I too took it out. I too. Oh, so yeah, I get it the way that it's okay. Mm. Yeah. So it's the way that it is. Yeah, 
Yeah, I got it. You guys all got that? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. All right, good. Uh, <laughs> 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 